Uh, without further ado, we're going to get right into the AFC South, and we're going to start with a team that is probably the centerpiece of just about everybody's fantasy lineup, the Houston be- Texans. Before you go, Nat, oh, you know what I'm going to ask for. I'm going to be my <laughs> slutty self. If you guys aren't, uh, if you guys are enjoying the content, please consider giving us a thumbs up. It helps us get out to more people. Continue to grow the wolf pack a free and easy way. Get your questions on, and you guys know we'll answer them all live after we get through these teams in about 40 minutes. And if you were catching the replay, but you have questions. As you should know by now, I answer them all in the comments and, of course, at Roto Street Wolf as well. So thank you guys in advance. If you consider giving us a thumbs up, it would mean the world to us. Thank you guys. All right. With that said, like I said, anyway, you're probably building your fantasy team around the Texans, and so we're going to start <laughs> off with them, right? Right. We're going to start with every, yeah. <laughs> anchor of any respectable fantasy team. Quarterback 28 on your projections board, Tyrod Taylor. You got him at 295 out of 480. 3,400 yards, 21 touchdowns, 11 picks, 63 rushes for 346 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, I don't even see him on your big board. Like, he might not have even been on your top. It's possible I overlooked him, but it's possible he didn't make your top 35 or whatever. You're not that excited about Tyrod Taylor. Certainly not, no. There's no real reason to draft him unless you're in one of those very, very deep best ball leagues and you have a horrible quarterback situation. But even still, there's like the risk that Deshaun Watson could return and end up playing for them. I don't expect him. I don't think he'll play a snap. And I guess we should start at the top in that sense. Like, if Watson plays – then this team does become mildly interesting, mildly entertaining mildly. Uh, because this guy did lead the league in passing last year. But assuming he's out and it seems like he won't, he himself doesn't want to play it down. Plus there's the mystery of what's going to happen with his legal situation. We don't need to speculate on that. So we're going to go through these assuming Tyrod Taylor is the quarterback, in which case you're not going to want to draft pretty much any of these Texans, including Tyrod Taylor. The one thing he has going for him is he can run. He is mobile. So there's a little bit of leg point upside there. But ultimately, there's really not much. Uh, Disgusting quarterback situation. I know we're going to turn our attention to the backfield. As it says right here to Dontrell Hillard, that's that's Mark Ingram. I talked to the uh, Rotoviz guys. I think they fixed it at this point. But right before we went live, Mark Ingram was not in there. So assume that is Mark Ingram. Uh, Nah, I just wanted to kind of give you that preface as well. But yeah, Tyrod Taylor, no need to spend much time on him. There's no reason to draft him. We're still not going to talk very much about Mark Ingram. Yeah. Uh, so you may have done a little bit of flipping between Philip Lindsay and David Johnson. When I did my research, and I know you've changed some stuff, and I may have missed this, I had them getting a pretty even split with Johnson getting a few more. I think you've changed that so it's actually Lindsay getting a few more. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so Lindsay's been the first guy in in both preseason games. In fact, Mark Ingram came in ahead of David Johnson when he played in the second preseason game. So once Ingram's in there, I'm going to flip those guys even further. Johnson's coming in a couple third downs, but he's the clear third fiddle here, which is kind of wild because he had a great end of last year. And I, that's also wild to even say he outscored December Derrick Henry in December. David Johnson did last year, but the team seems to no new coaching staff. And I guess I should have started at the top with that is Cully comes in there from the Ravens, the Ravens passing game coordinator. Nothing like making the passing game coordinator of the worst passing attack last year as your head coach. Great idea, Texans. They are just a dumpster fire of an organization. That That's all to say, I think this team is going to be hideous. Uh, the lowest amount of plays run as a team, 418 rush attempts, 480 pass attempts, low volume for everybody involved at all facets of the game, including the backs, including the, the quarterbacks. They're going to be so bad that they're going to need to try to put up points. I just don't think they have the horses anywhere on the field to be able to do so. Unless, again, of course, Deshaun Watson plays, everything in these projections will change. Right. But as of now, it's just hideous. A, a gross overall offense, a gross play caller. And, and speaking of David Culley, he comes again, as I said, from the Ravens. They love their three-man committees. Always, it, you know, their whole thing is to mess with defenses. Like, you know, who's going to be our back? Maybe a good real-life strategy. Horrible for fantasy football. So I... There's nobody in the running game. Yeah, Lindsey's starting. Yeah, he's going to get the most volume. I see a lot of people tweeting about that. But it's going to be the worst offense in the NFL if Deshaun Watson's not playing. Do we really want any piece of a three-headed nightmare? As you see it right here, 146 carries for Lindsey, less than 600 yards, four TDs. 125 for David Johnson, 500 yards, four TDs. Mark Ingram probably going to have more TDs than any of the two at like five with another 75 carries there. You look at the the way I distributed it, 35, 30, 20, and 15 to the quarterback. That is just not a ground pie anybody wants to be involved in. (laughs) All right. I'm going to make two quick points about the backfield. We've already spent too much time on the Houston Texans backfield. But (laughs) first thing is you've got Lindsey and Johnson 
both in the 50s as far as your running backs on the big board. So the, the, no interest of any kind for real. It's also you brought up the three headed monster. It's the worst kind of three headed monster because it's three guys that have all been the guy before. Right. Like it's David Johnson. It's Philip Lindsay. It's Mark Ingram. These are guys that have all had some degree. And in, in Johnson's case, a, a huge amount of success other places. These guys all think they should be the guy. They're all going to want their touches. And uh, right. what a bunch of garbage. And I think that's a really good point, too, Nat. Is it's not like a, a Patriots backfield when you know James White's at least getting the catches. You know Damian Harris is going to get a lot of the carries. And there might be a third guy who works in here, like Ramondre Stevenson, every now and again to give Harris a breather. All three of these guys can do it on every down, and that's probably the point of it is they're going to have them just alternate series after series, no rhythm, no cadence, no consistency, nothing. Just don't. Just don't. The answer to the Houston Texans backfield is no. <laughs> I hate it. Uh, awesome. You did talk before about how if Deshaun Johnson or Desha- Deshaun Watson sorry, doesn't play, you don't want to touch anybody else in this team. The one guy on the team I don't hate is Brandon Cooks. That's going to be their you. wide receiver one. You've got him going for 79 catches, a little over 1,000 yards, five touchdowns. That's on 125 targets. Uh, that's good enough only for your wide receiver 46 on projections. You got him 39 on the big board. I don't know if if that's low or maybe it's just like I'm try- kind of looking for a diamond in the rough. It's hard to argue he's going to produce much more than that. But for some reason, I don't take him as – I don't mind him as a late-round stab. Uh, you've got Nico Collins as the next guy. So it's like falling off a cliff a little bit after that. You got him for 44 catches, 550, five touchdowns. Uh, not much to get excited about. Although I said I do kind of like Cooks as a talent still. Yeah, I, I think Cooks actually spe- shouldn't be excited about him, but you should be excited about what you could get at his price. He's going in round nine round 10, and this is going to be a clear alpha. I mean, he already was the number one, and that was with Will Fuller there. He, he's he's clearly and consistently put up a 1,000 yards wherever he's at. Now he's been blessed with Drew Brees and Brady. Like he's, he's won the lottery in terms of quarterbacks year in and year out until this year. Right. Uh, but but still, he did not only, win the lottery this year. No, sure didn't. This is going to be the first year he's really played with a bad quarterback his entire career. So this will be a good measuring stick for like how good is this guy actually? Can he do a thousand yards when he has complete steaming pile of shit throwing to him? Maybe, I, but I do think he is interesting because one, there's no one else to throw to on a team that's going to be very often playing from behind, probably exclusively playing from behind this year. So that could be a lot of volume. As you see 125 ish targets. If they actually play at a faster pace than I'm anticipating, maybe that gets bumped up to 150. He hits 1100 and like seven touchdowns. You got yourself a nice little steal there in round seven, you know, round eight, nine, ten, where he's going. So I, I actually do like Brandon Cooks. He is the single player on the Texans I'll actually invest in. Maybe Nico Collins, really late, who's been impressing in camp, big body guy, could be a red zone threat. The only issue is if you're never in the red zone, a red zone threat doesn't really matter. So yeah, there, there's nothing here besides Brandon Cooks that interests me. I don't even think we should even talk about the tight ends. Like, yeah, three hundred. Name's Jordan Akins. Like what? What's the point? We don't. Why spend any? If you're interested, the Wolf's got him as his tight end, forty-five on the big board. (laughs) Yeah, you sprint, go get him. (laughs) Absolutely, you you must. You can't miss Jordan Akins. My God, (laughs) and those uh, seldom used, but still very prestigious three tight end leagues that sometimes people play in. He might be a a late round (laughs) pickup, right? Uh, oh, yeah, man. we're going to move on. We're going to move on to a team. Who is- Brandon Cooks, that's all you need to know for the tech. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below.